Hello, my name is Muck. These images appearing on the screen were taken from Google Images as the output of a Selenium Python bot using the text of the sentences I'm currently saying as inputs. Essentially, the Python program I created converts the text of my speaking script into image files on my computer. I will show you a basic run-through of how the program works and provide a file for download that, after installing some libraries, you can use to replicate this program. Let's get started. Beep beep, message from the future. This code no longer works, so the content I will be covering in this video no longer functions as of Chrome 92, since this program was created for Chrome 91. The reason for this is that when I'm going to tell you in the future what this means, but XPath, all the specific things that I talk about, will no longer work since the values have been changed by Google with the newest version of Chrome. You will have to edit these variables, so just think about this video as a guide for what to look out for when making your own bot, and not as a copy and paste thing, because that will not work. So let's get back to the actual video. Here is the code, so remember this is going to be a general run-through. Here we're just importing, like, Selenium and Time. Action Chains just allows us to, like, click on things, and then the rest allows us to, like, just go into the HTML and have the program be able to understand it. So this is just WebDriver Chrome. It just allows the program to work. This is just the location of where I put it. This is a list that contains all the words. It's currently empty. This is a list that contains all the images. It's currently empty. And yeah, it's going to be filled later. So first, this, this is like the first function. It's going to be called first. So it'll take words and then it'll ask for a user input, so like, the user can input whatever they want, so it's going to be like A, B, C, A, B, C. So the program would search up A, B, C, and then it would search up A, B, C again. And it'll have two images of A, B, C. And then it gets to this part, where it says that words is equal to sentence to words of this user input. So what is sentence to words? Well, it goes to here. Sentence to words just uses split, and it splits the inputted sentence into like, a list of words. So if you had a sentence that was like, I like apples, it can become I, and then like, and then apples. And all of it is like strings. So the way the split works is it splits along space. So if you go like apple, space, um, apple, then it'll go apple, and then it'll do this. So, we can have like a special character that ensures that it doesn't get split apart. So what if you wanted to search up like apple pie? If you have an underscore here, or at least in this case I'm using an underscore, apple pie will not be split apart, but that might be a bit difficult for Google to understand, right? Apple underscore pie. So, we're going to convert them into spaces. So it just, it just loops and uses, uses dot replace to replace all the underscores with spaces. And then it returns it to here, and then it searches for words. So it goes to this one. Now we're moving on to the part where we're actually getting the image. So this is probably the most difficult part of this program. So it's probably useful to actually know what we're trying to do here. This is what we're going to try to do. We're just going to get to this site, which is Google Images. We're going to get the search bar. We're going to search up the first word that there is in the input. Say that is banana. And then we're going to press enter. We're going to get to here. We're going to ignore all of these things because they're small images. We're going to click on the first one that, it, that we want. And then we got to find the big image. So we search through and we land on the big image. We know where it is now, and then we take a screenshot, then we save it as a file, maybe like a PNG or something. So that is our goal. Now we can return back to the code. So now it brings us to search for words from here to here. This is where we're actually going to be searching for the word. So we have a for loop. So for every word in this list, which is a result of every word in this sentence, or paragraph even, it'll go and search up that one word. It'll go browser.get this. This is just the link to Google Images search. So if I paste it in right here, 
it'll bring us to Google Images. And then, it'll maximize the window, so if it wasn't al already maximized, it'll make the browser as big as it can. And then, it'll have to get the search bar. So I found that the search bar, which is here, so we're using XPath. So XPath is like, it tells us the location of the search bar. Not location as in like, it's this many pixels away from the top. Location within the HTML. And if we know where it is in the HTML, we can use information in here. We can also store them as a browser element for later use. We used XPath, which is this, I found out, is the XPath for it. It gets that, and we're calling it search bar. And then, at the search bar, we use send keys, which will emulate, like, if I typed in something. So here, it sends in words I. Say, if this is the first word, it would be zero. It'll get words zero, it'll type it in there, and then it'll do this, another send keys, which presses enter. So if, like, word I was, say, egg, and then it sends keys for enter, we'll have eggs, and then we'll sleep. Maybe the page isn't finished loading, so that's one second, that's done. And then we're gonna go on to grab image. So grab image is the function that is being used to actually get a list of images. All the images that are on the site. In this case, it is Google Images for eggs. So the way we're going to do that is by using find elements by xpath. Here there's an s behind elements because we're finding a list of images, not a single image. So, because we're using xpath, we need to find a distinguishing characteristic that differentiates images from, like, text. I have found that a distinguishing characteristic is that at the images src, it has data colon image, and then it has this stuff. So this stuff may change, it may not be a JPEG and stuff like that. But this thing does not change. It always remains the same. So we can use this to our advantage. So here, we're using contains. So it has to be img image, which this thing is img for image, and contains, meaning one part of at src, one part of its src, has to be data colon image. That's how we sift them out. And after this, we can do further processing, and then we go to find to click. So it'll go to the next thing, which is finding ones that we should click. So it'll wait a bit, and then it'll just go while. So like, it'll just keep going, but as long as it is like this. So, I have found that these images in the top also contain that data colon image, but we don't want these. These are like tiny postage stamp images. We want the bigger images. But I have found that all of them have a width of 50 and a height of 50. Just like, they're all the same. So, if we remove anything with a height of 50 or a width of 50, well, and a width of 50, then we'll get the first image that is here. So we do that, and then we use action chains to click on the image, and then we go here. So here, we use time sleep, we wait, we wait for it to load again. We've clicked on the first image. Yay, we have an image. Now we have to search for what image we just made appear. I have also found that this has something special that the rest of these images do not. If you go and inspect element, you can find that at JS action, it has load this thing. Well, if it's images like these, the rest of them, it does not have that. So that's how we can distinguish between this and these and everything else we don't want. Now that we know the image, that we want, we can download the image. It's a big er image, so we'll download this image. So this just downloads it, and that number thing is just used to label it. So like, if it was the first thing in this for loop, it'll be zero. If it's the second, it'll be one dot png, and it'll just keep going like that using images dot yeah. And then here, it basically just starts this whole thing off. So the program isn't very long, and it isn't all that complex. 
Like I told you before at the beginning of this video, this code will not work immediately. It will have to be edited. Which brings me onto the point that whenever I use XPath and stuff like that, it is not permanent. It's like a better version of saying, oh, click on this pixel area here. Like, oh, click. Yay. Things change. This may not be in the same location as before. Like, pretend that this was Google Chrome. So things do not always stay in the same location. So j just always keep in mind that whenever a site updates, the code will probably also need to be updated because some of these specific variables may be different. So just keep that in mind when you're making your own bot, that the use of XPath, it does require maintenance over time. So that's all from me. If you liked this video, please consider leaving a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it and tell me why. Um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. Uh, if you're unhappy, uh, tell me about why you're unhappy. Yes, yeah, so that's all from me. See ya.